Hello, Empowered Woman. Welcome to this episode of the Empowered Woman Podcast. And today I talk to Jess Bonasso, also known as the Self-Care Goddess. She is a Brave Life Catalyst and Self-Rescue Guide, author and keynote speaker who has been empowering high-performing wonder women in need of a midlife self-rescue since 2007. We chatted about hitting burnout, reinventing yourself, the Enneagram, and so much more. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Empowered Woman Podcast, the number one show on personal development for women entrepreneurs. If you're wanting to stop spinning your wheels, trying random personal development resources, and actually boost your confidence to show up fearlessly in your life and business, this is the place for you. I am so glad that you're here. My name is Marta Spurk, and I'm your host, triplet mom, woman empowerment coach, and all things motivation extraordinaire. Welcome again, and let's dive into today's episode. Real quick, before we get on with the episode, I have to remind you that it's my birthday week. Yes, my birthday was December 2nd, and I decided to offer you a gift. I am giving away my brand new Signature Talk Confidence Workshop, which is an event valued at $199, and where you walk away with exactly how to engage your audience and prepare them for a free and then paid offer in as little as two weeks. At this workshop, you will come in frustrated with your unresponsive audience and leave with a plan that will turn unengaged prospects into full-blown clients and fans because that's exactly what I've been able to do this year. This weekend only, I am giving away the workshop for free to everyone who enrolls in the Empowered Woman School. So we kick off this birthday bash sale today and you have until Monday, December 7th to enroll in the Empowered Women's School to get the workshop for free, okay? All the links are in the show notes. Go on ahead, register, and I can't wait to see you at the workshop to get your audience engaged, get seen, gain their trust, and get paid. Hi, Jess. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi. So happy to be here. Yeah, super excited. So um, I connected with Jess uh, via Women of Denver. And recently I had uh, Crystal Covington, the founder of Women of Denver here on the show. So it's nice to have um, another member of the community um, yeah. to talk about, you know, all the amazing things that you've got going on. And we had a chance to chat even before this and know that we have some similar philosophies and ways of working with women and empowering women. So I'm super excited to hear more about your life story and also how you've been empowering women with your work. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do? Okay, awesome. Well, first of all, I just would like to say thank you so much for having me join you today for this conversation. I'm super grateful for the time and energy that you're sparing me. Yeah. And um, I'm excited to share some of this information with your community as well. But basically who I am is, um, I'm also known as the self-care goddess. I'm a brave life catalyst. I guess you could say, and a self-rescue coach uh, for worn out Wonder Woman. And, you know, I've been doing this work. I've actually been in business for about 13 years now, about 13 and a half years to be exact. Prior to that, I was in the corporate world for 13 and a half years, also about the same amount of time. And I operated very heavily in my masculine energy when I was climbing up the corporate ladder. Um, in my 20s, I had no idea what being in my feminine was about. I didn't know anything about self-care. I was just busy climbing my way up the social or up the corporate ladder, trying to make as much money as I could and get the best, highest paying position that I could. Whether I actually liked the position that I was going to be hired into or not really wasn't a factor for most of that. Um, it was just sort of, I was following the breadcrumbs, but not really knowing what breadcrumbs I wanted to follow. So. On top of that, I was also doing my uh, undergraduate and my graduate degree program, and, and there came a point where I became really burned out, and um, I realized that uh, my life was not what I wanted it to be, and that the success I'd been striving for was not, was not attainable, and it didn't have anything to do with money, so I had to start thinking about what would make, what would be a better fit. Started out as a um, self-care coach back in the uh, 2007. <laughs> and of course, nobody understands the value of self-care back then. They do mm-hmm. now because burnout has become way more of an epidemic than ever yes. before. 
Um, and I thought I had it all figured out in the beginning. And then the first couple of years in business, wearing all the hats of the business owner, guess what happens again? I go into burnout again. So um, long story short, um, I'm doing right now what I love doing because of the pain that I went through personally. So the pain that I've experienced in my life with burnout and sort of a dark night of the soul experience where I was just really questioning my path and my purpose and who I was and all of that ultimately is what has led me to do the same work for, for others. And now if I'd had a self rescue coach way back when to help me through all of this, if I'd had me to help me through all this, I probably, okay. who knows, maybe I would have stayed in the corporate world. I don't know. But, um, anyway, so now I help hardworking, you know, high performing women who are up to big things in the world, just learn how to better take care of themselves in the process and really create like a, a thriving life. Um, that, that isn't based on burnout, that isn't mm -hmm. based on how much you're putting out and how much you're doing, but it's actually based on who you're being from the inside out mm -hmm. rather than the outside in. So oh. that's who I am. That's that is, to. that is so beautiful. And I love how honest you are. And I think there needs to be more women out there that speaks this truth that it's not the money that's going to fulfill you. It's not the hard work that's going to fulfill you. And it's so unfortunate that it takes us going down that road to realize yeah. that that's not yeah. the road that we want to be in. And that's not how we want to lead our lives. And that's why it's amazing to have people like you that have experienced the both sides, right? Yeah. The burnout as a, as an entrepreneur, the burnout as uh, someone that worked in corporate America um, to say, Hey, this is not the way. Let me yeah. show you a better way. And I just love the terminology self rescue coach, because yeah. essentially that's what we should all be striving for is to learn how to rescue ourselves and not wait for that person, that experience, that business, that job to do that for us, because mm -hmm. you are living proof that that does not exist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, I think it's natural for us to be externally focused when we're younger, you yeah. know, because we don't know any better unless you were raised by parents who are really teaching you how to live your life from the inside out, yeah. um, your own power and from your own authenticity and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that, let's face it, who's actually being taught that, right? Right. Unless right. that's happening for you, most of us are learning the hard way. Like mm -hmm. we're, we're going into burnout and then realizing, oh, that doesn't work. And we're trying to course correct and adjust. And so I just hope that based on my own experiences and the mistakes that I've made and the lessons that I've learned along the way, and what I've done to course correct and adjust it all. If there's a way in which I can share that information with others and help save somebody the pain and the heartache, especially the number of years that I went through that pain and heartache. I mean, that's, that's what my purpose is about. Really. Yes. It's about taking that pain that I went through and turning it into a life's purpose worth living for. So yeah, absolutely. I agree. 100%. Totally important. And so in the beginning stages of your journey, when you realize, wow, this is not what I want to be doing. And even in starting your business, what were some of the things that helped you get going on this uh, path of self rescue? What were some of the things that you used then that were helpful that helped mm -hmm. you kind of see the light? Oh, this is the way. Um, and that you may still be using right now with your clients and even on a daily basis with, with yourself. Yeah, that's a great question. So initially, um, when I was going through burnout and dealing with a lot of stress, and I had a lot of I had a lot of anger management issues, a lot of stress issues. Um, I was dealing with back pain so bad that I was actually considering surgery, and it was the back pain itself that actually was what was taking me out. Like mm. I was in my early 30s, and I mean, I had back pain so bad for years, from like my mid 20s on. And I was doing all kinds of things, chiropractic care, acupuncture, massage therapy, uh, yoga. I was going to the gym and working out. I mean, seemingly, these are all things that you would imagine would probably fix and correct a lot of those things. But what was really going on is I had deep-seated cellular memory imprints and patterns and also ego patterns that I developed in my early years. Like, for example, I was a workaholic mm -hmm. and my workaholism 
was being spurred, if we look at this from an Enneagram perspective, which I know you and I are both fans of, yes. I was moving so heavily into the achiever, which is the three part of the Enneagram. Mm -hmm. And um, I had number one, I had a fear of failure because I had been raised as a child in a sort of poverty type conditions. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had this belief that in order for me to be successful, I had to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And that was what would prove my value and my worth. Yeah. And that's what the three is really focused on is wanting to prove their value and their worth so that, you know, as a six on the Enneagram, I could feel safe and supported. So I was a six that was moving to three in my early twenties, mm -hmm. not from a healthy place, but from, right. I was trying to fix what that, that core fear of not feeling safe and not feeling supported and not feeling like I had value to offer the world. So my value was my hard work, basically. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was running the show. I was treating the symptoms and I, I found, I find that a lot of people are doing this when, and, and it's natural and it's normal. There's nothing yeah. wrong with you if you're just treating the symptoms in the beginning, but if you don't get to the underlying root cause of what's going on, you're not going to ultimately work through what you need to work through. Mm -hmm. You might have some temporary relief, you know, like I would work on my back and do yoga and all these things to help strengthen it. But at the end of the day, my back was still hurting every single day. It might feel better for a couple of days and then it would go back to feeling bad again. So because I was considering surgery, I, I think I was finally in a position where I could open my heart and my mind mm. to even more alternative modalities. And that is when I literally manifested um, a massage therapist into my life who told me about a book called The Journey by Brandon Bays. Mm. And it was Brandon's story about how she healed herself of a tumor the size of a small basketball in her uterus wow. and healing work that she had developed and created as a result of this healing that she was now doing around the world with people all over the world. And so here I am trying to heal my body physically. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden the idea that maybe there's an emotional component to what's going on with my low back started to come into the picture. And that's when I first started learning about that mind body connection, the mm, psychosomatic right. part of our, our, our beingness. So, so initially it was all of those things I was doing to address the symptoms, you know, yoga, chiropractor, et cetera. And then it became metaphysical type modalities like the journey method, which is really just a simple guided meditation. Mm -hmm. But the framework of the meditation is structured in such a way where you can do deep emotional healing work around core wounds and fears that are really holding you back. And so when I remember doing a physical journey, my first physical journey process on my low back, it went right back to my childhood. Wow. Memories that came up were from my childhood when I was very, very, very young um, that I had never processed or worked through in any kind of therapy. I mean, I talked about it maybe in therapy in my mm -hmm. 20s, but I'd never really gone in and felt what I needed to feel and cried and mm -hmm. released that energy. Yeah. I, it was all emotion that was stuck and stored in my body because I had no idea I was, there was no emotional intelligence happening for mm -hmm. me at that age. You know, I just was never equipped with that. I was raised by a single father. So, so the journey method became another tool. And when I um, decided to become a journey practitioner, that's when I learned about the Enneagram, okay. which then became another mind blowing tool Yes, uh, that just, blew me away when I first learned and finally identified with myself as the six on the Enneagram. I remember sitting and reading this in-depth chapter on the six Enneatype about all the, the different levels of development. And it was like, it was like my entire life was flashing before my eyes as I'm reading that chapter. And all of a sudden little things that I couldn't understand made sense because he was describing it in these levels of mm -hmm. development. Uh, what happens for sixes when their trigger around safety and security is triggered mm -hmm. and how they act and how they respond. And I was like, oh my gosh, now I understand what's been running my particular show all mm -hmm. this time. And it's like all of a sudden the missing puzzle piece has started falling into place and my life and everything I'd experienced up to that point actually started making sense. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was very empowering. So from there, it was all systems go. I'm completely committed to my personal growth and evolution. I'm going to do everything growth based that I possibly can to heal at the emotional level, to heal at the cellular level, to really grow up the wounded parts of my personality 
and um, those are the tools that started my my journey with um, as an entrepreneur. Those are the tools that I ended up mm -hmm. bringing in as an entrepreneur and starting making use of right away. So, you know, back in 2007 when I started my business, I I was teaching yoga mm. part time as part of my business. I was um, I was a journey practitioner and I was doing the journey process work with my clients to help them heal their cellular memory patterns. And then I was also doing Enneagram work and then just straight up self-care coaching mm -hmm. to teach people strategically how to better manage not just their time, but their energy and, you know, their value, their worth and all of those things. So there've been a lot of tools that I've used yes. over the years to get where I am today. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, but I love that. Uh, how it all began with, your back and understanding that there was a deeper um, cause to this because we yeah. tend to just, like you said, treat the symptoms and not really go to the root cause. And then it would oh. just keep going around and around and we don't really heal it or get rid of that. And mm -hmm. I love all of that. And I'm glad that you brought the Enneagram up because that's one of the things that I wanted to touch on uh, because I always talk about it and I, I, I think it's a fabulous tool for self awareness, for Absolutely. growth, and also to bettering relationships because as you understand yourself better mm -hmm. it's easier to understand where people are coming from and what's mm -hmm. running their show i love yeah. using that what's running the show because it's the autopilot of the personalities right Absolutely. so yeah. i usually share mostly about my type which is the three and my husband's type which is the one it's i, I tend to attract <laughs> a lot of the and the twos as well the helpers um, which is usually what i share here on the show i've never had anyone come on and specifically say, this is a tool that has helped me and a tool that I use in my practice. So that's why I'm super interested nice. in hearing how exactly you do that. And even if mm -hmm. you want to give us some insight in some of the types or uh, general knowledge of what the Enneagram is, I would love that. Yeah. Um, awesome. Great question. So um, <laughs> my, my Corgi's jumping up on the couch to join us. <laughs> you know what? It's funny because we're sitting here having our conversation and um, because of the time change, she's starting to get a little bit pickier about meal times, which mm. happened right around 5 p.m. mountain mm. time. So she's coming over here to say, hey, it's I'm time. <laughs> You're going to have to wait, sweetheart. Um, so anyway, um, so as a general rule of thumb, one of the things, so when I work with my clients now, it's a little bit different than when I first started working with my mm. clients. Um, I, I take every single one of my clients through an Enneagram assessment in the beginning. And this is not necessarily to figure out what their core type is necessarily. Mm. It's more to figure out what are the, like their top four to five core fears that are running the show. Mm. And sometimes their core fears yeah. that are running the show are not just with one personality type. And mm -hmm. this is the thing about the Enneagram that I love, I love, love about the system is no person is ever one type. We're mm -hmm. always a unique combination and blend of nine different personality yeah. types. Um, some of us might have, you know, we might be kind of spread evenly across the board. Some of us might have, you know, more uh, emphasis in one type than another. But at the end of the day, each one of these nine types has a set of, of distinct core wounds or fears associated with each type. So in my work with my clients, first and foremost, I'm wanting to know what the core fears are that are running the show so that as soon as we possibly can, we can go in and we can do cellular memory healing work around those core wounds. Mm. Because I find that when we really unravel the core woundedness, then the unhealthy patterns or disintegrated patterns associated with that particular wound, they start to unravel and you automatically will begin to move to the higher side of your personality. And that's the other piece about the Enneagram that I love is you've got, you know, once you figure out what your unique types are, yeah. you can go in and you can look at what are the levels of development for each type? Cause there's like nine levels of development within each of the nine types. So for me on the six, for example, I could go in and read that book and I could see when I first got introduced to this, that I was in the mid range. I was probably at a level four or five, um, uh, in the, in the levels of development as it related to the sixth part of my personality. Okay. I can't remember what I was on the three side, but I remember being sort of in that middle range, which meant that I still had a lot of room for growth. And if I looked at the growth path above and beyond where I was at, I could see habits, patterns, and behaviors that I would need to foster 
and become better at mm. in order for me to grow up the wounded, disintegrated parts of my personality. So the thing I love about the Enneagram is not only is it a window into what's really running the show, mm -hmm. it's also going to give you a roadmap for greatness. It's mm -hmm. going to teach you what are the integrated personality habits and patterns that you need to foster for your unique personality type so that you can grow up those unhealthy parts of your personality. And mm -hmm. I just think that's so fascinating because a lot of times the reason why we can't fix and correct what's not working is we do not have a clear sense or direction of where we need to go with it. So yeah. it's literally a spiritual growth and development system. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's how I use it. And so I take every single client through an Enneagram assessment in the beginning. And then, um, depending on what product or service they're signing up for, I do have a program um, I call it the brave hearted way. And it really what it is, is just a self rescue guide and a six month experience that I take my clients through. And the very first month of that experience is a deep dive self discovery, um, on the Enneagram. Mm -hmm. And so not only do they take the personality assessment, but they go in and they do some deep dive self discovery work and answer a lot of really deep sometimes very uncomfortable questions to get them to start thinking about how this pattern has been showing up in their life and help them sort of wake them up to what's not working and what would work better. It's like an awakening piece. And, and that actual, that model, I call it awakening your mastery, mm -hmm. um, your self mastery basically. So, um, so that's how I utilize the Enneagram. And then of course, throughout that, that brave hearted way program, I will also refer back to the Enneagram and what they learned in the first month's module, depending on what other module we're working on, um, because it'll show up in every single aspect of our life. So mm -hmm. um, I use it pretty heavily all throughout my work with my clients. And that's pretty fun and exciting. Yes. Well, and so many things that you said I resonate with and, and is the exact reason why I love it. Love mm -hmm. the Enneagram so much is because there is a path. There is kind of like a blueprint of what you can do with it. It's not, you take a look at yourself and you see how awful you've been behaving. And then you're like yeah. victim mode. There's nothing I can do. I'm an awful person. It's quite the opposite. It's right. having this awakening and then seeing that there is a possibility for greatness. If you will just focus on certain things that you haven't yeah. been focusing on because you had no idea now right. you do. And it's like, Oh my gosh, this is so empowering. I can actually become a better version of myself. And with that affect the people around me too, that may mm -hmm. be completely blinded to what's running the show. Mm -hmm. And with my change, with my transformation, I may shine some light into these people's lives. Cause this is what I've seen. And, and you can speak to that as well. This is what I've seen for myself as I learn to mm -hmm. operate in a healthier space of my personality type. It's almost like the people around me start catching on and they start yeah. seeing things about themselves because I'm not reacting the same as I used to before, which oh, gives yeah. them the opportunity to be like, Oh, so this doesn't affect her this much again. So what is it about this that I keep doing? It's just such a, a transformational yeah. tool. And it's, I guess, it only makes really sense once you start taking that deep dive. Cause I think I usually yeah. say this, most people will take the test and even like with Myers-Briggs and all these other personality assessments, they just put that on the shelf and they say, you know, when it comes up in conversation, somebody asks me, at least I know what I am, but they don't really know. It's just, you know, something to say. And that's not what it's meant for. <laughs> it's meant to, to be a part of your life. Even yeah. if you're not working as a coach with it, as a tool, like what we're saying here, yeah. it's so helpful in so many other ways. <laughs> it's so helpful. The other thing, I love what you were talking about, the ripple effect that it, mm -hmm. that it can have on, you know, when you start to learn, when you wake up to what's not working and you have a, a roadmap for how to become a better person, mm -hmm. you're automatically going to start shifting the way you show up, right? Yeah. Which has a ripple effect on the people in your life. And I just remember the first time that I learned about the Enneagram was, was at one of the journey events. Like I said, I was going through my journey practitioner training. Mm -hmm. And initially I didn't resonate super strongly with any one type as they were going through and doing the parody for each type. Um, because they were like simulating what mm -hmm. each type would show up as and they would come on stage and act out that type. It was like a parody. It's actually quite funny. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't see myself in any of the parodies that they were doing. What I did see though, was my ex-husband who I was at that point married to. Mm. And I remember going, 
okay, I'm not totally sure where I'm at in the Enneagram, but that is totally my Mm ex-husband. And I remember coming home after this week long, this was a week long silent retreat, by the way, where we learned about the Enneagram. So all your stuff is coming up and you can't really talk to anybody about it. You're not supposed to call home or any of those things. Mm -hmm. So here I'm gone for a whole week and I'm learning all these new things. And I just felt like I came back a completely different person Mm -hmm. because now I knew what I didn't know before, not just about myself, but about him. And the thing that I love about this, the system is prior to learning about the Enneagram, I literally thought that maybe there was something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Like I was looking at the problems and the challenges that I was facing with my life as something that was happening because I was quote unquote broken Mm -hmm. or not good enough or didn't have what it took to be, healthy or, you know, like I felt alone in my brokenness, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And what the Enneagram has done for me is woken me up to the idea that every single Mm -hmm. one of us has disintegration. We have unhealthy habits, patterns, and behaviors. There's not a single person on the face of this planet, including I would venture to say the Dalai Lama himself, Mm who doesn't have some sort of disintegration that comes into play at some point or another. It's just part of life. It's part of human nature. And there was something about that realization that just made me start forgiving myself and being Mm -hmm. a lot more gentle and loving with myself about what I was going through and Mm -hmm. actually started feeling like I could come from a greater place of oneness, Mm -hmm. not just with myself, but with others. And I could have more compassion and empathy for others when, when things weren't going my way, instead of taking it personal, I would be like, this probably isn't about me. There's probably something else going on here. So it it allowed for me to have more curiosity, more interest in discovering what was really going on, more patience, more empathy, more compassion. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think that's another wonderful byproduct the Enneagram that is helpful for, I think, all of us. It's like, it gives us a window into how unique we are, but also how alike we yes. are. Yeah. Oh, but- I love what you said that you used to feel alone in your brokenness. Isn't yeah. that what we all feel until yeah. we start doing this work? And even yeah. through the work, it's, it can be lonely at times, but yeah. having this knowledge is so helpful. And with the compassion and with the forgiveness for yourself and for others. This is mm-hmm. another thing that I, I know the Enneagram has helped me with is because as I forgive myself for these weaknesses, for uh, this, this brokenness essentially, and the, my imperfection, yeah, I am able to do that for others because I understand even if they don't think like me, even if their lens is different, yeah. they're still dealing with something, which is so many memes out there and say, be nice to people. You don't know what they're going through. And it's it true. is true. And it's true. And it's these concepts that we kind of know, but once you go deeper into this, you yeah. know that, you know, so it's a lot easier yeah. to practice that compassion, that forgiveness, that kindness, because yeah. ultimately you are, as you practice it with yourself, it's easier to do it with other people, but you have yeah. to start with you. And, and usually we think, Oh, I'm good to everybody. Oh, I'm happy with everybody. But if that relationship with yourself is not flowing, you really are not good with everybody. You really are not that kind. (laughs) Yeah. Your external world is, in my opinion, is always going to be a reflection of your internal world. Yes. So if you've got stuff going on outside that isn't working for you, it's always a, it's it's a window for you to look, turn it inward and go, okay, this thing that I'm judging this other person for right here, is there any way in which I'm not showing up Mm -hmm. the way that I think they should be showing up. Exactly. And if the answer is yes, I am doing that. And I, I'm, oh, wow. Maybe I, it's not to judge yourself for it, but it's to go, oh, hang on a second. I need to take ownership of this pattern I'm seeing outside of me. Because as I take ownership of that pattern inside, the outside world will shift. Yes, it will. The ripple effect will happen. It really will. And well, I know you have something amazing coming up Enneagram wise that I, that I wanted you to share with us, but before you do, there's something that I have been wanting to do on the show. And since I'm releasing this, uh, the first week of December, I was like, let's start the month with something different, which is, uh, kind of like rapid fire questions, but Ooh, I mean, it's like, Oh, I feel like I'm on the Brene Brown podcast. Let's do yes, it. Yes. So with using my <laughs> framework, which is the empowered woman path, the five stages that have mm-hmm. everything to do with self. And I use the Enneagram with everything. So I'll awesome. just tell you uh, these little phrases, which are part 
uh, the names of the stages of the five stages and okay. whatever comes to mind, it could be a word, it could be a phrase, whatever, whatever comes. <laughs> Tell okay. Me. Okay. Oh. So notice yourself. Hmm. Notice yourself. Um, I think what first comes to my mind is just see yourself be, like, like notice who you really are. Like, who are you really? Um, that inner growth and that inner seeking. I'm a growth seeker. Big time. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a spiritual growth seeker big time. And it's because I want to know myself. I want to notice myself. I want yes. to come back to home mm -hmm. instead of being externally focused. I want to be not self-absorbed, but yep. self-aware. Yes. So self-awareness, I think maybe would capture that in a single word. Beautiful. Noticing yourself. Yes. Okay. Next one. Listen to yourself. Mm. Uh, intuition. Mm -hmm. is the word that comes to my mind. Um, and also something that I tell all of my clients is to practice listening to your body because it's a barometer for your soul, mm -hmm. right? Listening yeah. to your emotions, listening to your physical well-being, yeah. listening to resistance that you have in your gut when you're having to work through something like pay attention to what your body is telling you mm -hmm. because there's a lot of wisdom in there. Definitely. Next yeah. one is forgive yourself. Um, that's absolutely essential and critical. Mm -hmm. It's, I think one of the things that I'm learning probably the most in the last, um, 10 years is this self-forgiveness piece. Um, you know, I've been through some relationships through my life that didn't go quite the way that I wanted them to. I wish I could say I found the love of my life and I've been married for 20, 30, 40 years, but it's not true. Um, I just finished a 10-year relationship that I ended, and I beat myself up a mm. lot during that relationship for not doing things the way I should have done them and all of that. And there came a point where I just was like, you know what? I'm so tired of shaming myself mm. and making myself wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the best that I can in any given moment. Yeah. It's not to give myself an excuse, but that self-forgiveness, the self-compassion that comes yeah. with self-forgiveness it's absolutely critical for our growth and our evolution. And you can do all the growth work in the world that you want, but if you don't do self-forgiveness work, yeah. again, from the outside end, our external world is a reflection of our internal world. Like there will be repercussions to not forgiving yourself. Yes, so. definitely. And thank you for your openness too, because that's yeah. an important part of the process, right? In order to forgive yourself as well as being honest yeah. and, to be, and true. To be vulnerable. To be yeah. vulnerable. Yes, 100%. The next one is empower yourself. Uh, well, I'm a huge fan of this. When I first started realizing that I had some problems in my life that I really needed to start addressing, I, I distinctly remember the conversation I had with my then ex-husband or my, my then husband. And I remember saying to him, as I had just got finished crying, he was sitting up on the couch. I was sitting on the floor and lamenting over all the stuff that wasn't working. And there was some problems I was trying to deal with and cope with. And I just remember telling him, you know what? I don't care what it takes, no matter what. From this moment forward, I'm going to take back control of my life and I'm going to stop being the victim. Yes. And it was that moment, it was, it was the beginning of October 2005 when I said this to him, and I'm not kidding you, when I proclaimed uh, personal responsibility, which is really about empowering yourself, yeah, right? totally. When I proclaimed that personal responsibility, it was three weeks later that I was synchronistically led to the massage therapist who turned me on oh, to the journey goodness. book. And I Ooh, am not I like, <laughs> to this day. I swear, swear, swear to goodness that it was me saying that and making it a very decisive choice to no longer be the victim that opened up the energy for me to start receiving the breadcrumbs that were going to literally save wow. my life. That's so incredible. when you make a commitment to empower yourself, mm -hmm. you are going to open up the flow for all the abundance that you want to come in now, whether or not you're paying attention to the breadcrumbs right. that that's a different story. Is another thing altogether, <laughs> but uh, it will open up the flow. Yes. That's what I truly believe. Beautiful. And last but not least transform yourself. Yeah. Transformation, man. It's like what I was talking about <laughs> earlier, like all that pain that I went through mm -hmm. in my early twenties and my thirties, it was horrible. 
going through it. But the fact that I could transform it and turn it into something good, like if I could find the seed for success or joy or wisdom within any single setback, challenge or mistake that I'm ever experiencing, the more that I can transmute that energy of failure or challenge into Mm -hmm. an opportunity for my success, an opportunity for my growth, my evolution, my ascension, Mm -hmm. so to speak, uh, that transformation is super, super powerful. This is one of the reasons why I'm personally 100% completely dedicated to personal growth and development work. I think growth is one of the best possible things you can do for yourself Mm -hmm. to transmute the pain of your past into your purpose and turn it into something that you can actually do good with. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Turning something bad or challenges or anything that you see as negative as something positive because it's all in that outlook. It's all in your perspective and it really is your choice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's part of, it's, it's really part of our karma, right? Our karma becomes part of our Dharma, right? All of the pain and suffering and the reasons why we're here and all the the challenges that we have to go through, it's actually part of our purpose, which is Mm -hmm. our Dharma. And so the more that you can understand that and look for the gift in every single moment Mm -hmm. of life, that's where the magic happens. Yes, it really is. In that, this is where the magic happens. Yes, in that gratitude, in that present moment, in that yep. intentionality, mindfulness, yep. all the beautiful things. Oh, this is amazing, Jess. Thank you so much. So tell us more how to find you and what you have coming up uh, that's focused on the Enneagram so that people can go and sign up for that. Awesome. Yeah. So um, yeah, starting in January, um, I have a four-week Enneagram experience for um, – for basically radical growth and self mastery. And it's, it's called awaken your mastery. And it's the, it's literally the first month in the six month program that I offer, okay. but I offer it as a standalone program because it's, um, there's a lot of people that really need this right now. We've just been through a really rough year. Mm-hmm. Let's face it. I mean, yes. 2020, whew, talk about transforming challenges mm-hmm. into purpose, right? Yes. Wow. <laughs> This would, there are so many opportunities. This <laughs> so <year>. many. <laughs> Turn into transformation. Um, and so I, I wanted to give people a chance to better understand what's been going on for themselves over this past year and better understand some of the blocks and the challenges that they've been up against. And again, if we can look at it through the lens of the Enneagram, we can better understand ourselves, yeah. better understand others. And I think right now as a culture, if we can really – practice more compassion and empathy with one another. That's what's needed to really Mm -hmm. heal all of the chaos that we've just been through and the conflict that we've been through. So it's basically four weeks where we go through and you do a deep dive discovery around your unique personality patterns and types. You'll, you'll learn about all nine of the types. You'll do exercises each week related to your unique personality patterns and figure out what the disintegrated parts of your personality are that you need to work on the most, what the integrated parts of your personality are that you need to foster Mm -hmm. in order to grow up those disintegrated parts. Um, And you'll also learn, speaking of gratitude, um, I have a resilience practice that I teach all of my clients um, in that first module, in that first program. And that's also going to be taught. It's a gratitude practice that's really designed to help you find the gift, not just in what's working well, but in what's not working well Hmm. so that you can transmute or transform the energy of what's not working well into the opportunity for whatever is next, that action that needs to be taken or the support that you need to request to fix and correct what's not working. So it's literally a process, a step-by-step process. Whenever you're challenged that you can take yourself through that will help you feel all the feels associated Mm -hmm. with it. So the emotions don't get stuck. It'll help you diagnose what's working, what's not working. Mm -hmm. And then it'll help you walk away with wisdom and insight that you can actually put into action to correct what's not working. So it's really designed to teach people how to become more resilient. So they're constantly working on moving to the higher side of their personality with every little thing that comes up. Um, And that's a huge, huge part of that four week training program. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to learn how to become more resilient and more compassionate and loving to yourself and to others, this experience is absolutely for you. Um, And so anyone who's interested in joining me for that, if you want more information, I suggest you just visit my website, which is www.jessvanasso.com. That's J-E-S-S-B-O-N-A-S-S-O.com. 
And if you sign up for my Brave Life Assessment and Toolkit, that includes an Enneagram assessment. So if oh. you just want to get an Enneagram assessment, yeah. figure out where you are on the Enneagram, that's one place to start is mm-hmm. to go sign up for the, the toolkit and the assessment. Okay. And then you'll also be added to my newsletter and that will keep you in the loop on when that event's being offered and provide you with links to register and all of that if you decide that's something that you want to make part of your New Year's resolution. Sounds amazing. And I'll pop the links on in the show notes as well. Great. Thank you so much. This was such an amazing conversation. I could talk to you about this for hours and hours. <laughs> I know. We'll have to do this sometime when when it's not an interview. We'll just like have coffee or something. Yes, I know. Or whenever <laughs> whenever we can meet in person and just have this um philosophy about philosophize about all the Enneagram things and personalities and, and yeah. personal growth. Thank you so Sounds much. Like fun. Yes. Uh, always. Like fun. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you, hon. It's been a pleasure. How did you like my new idea of rapid fire questions using the empowered woman's path? I had so much fun. Do let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear your feedback. Don't forget to connect with Jess. All the links are in the show notes and also don't forget birthday bash sale you will get for free my signature talk confidence workshop if you enroll in the empowered women's school this weekend only the link is in the show notes until next time bye